The key for UT's new DC are going to be his DTs and his DBs, and it's coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Last week, I released a video about UT's new defensive coordinator, Pete Kwiatkowski. And Longhorn fans, you guys showed up. I appreciate it. I said that you guys were one of the best group of fans in all of college football, and it's true. And you showed up online, and you guys were awesome and gracious, and I appreciate it. And so because of that, with all the great questions that I got, I thought I would go a little deeper into Coach K. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, ring that bell, get notified when we have new stuff coming out. Like, smash that button down below, and comment. Your comments, Longhorns fans, were awesome. Even some of those Oklahoma fans who got on here when you were respectful, pretty funny. So give me a comment down below. I'm making this video because of comments and questions that we got on the last one. Give me a great question, and I'm happy to answer it. So comment down below. Don't forget to share this video out. A ton of you guys asked about how he pressures. And one of the things University of Washington did under Coach K was they pressured extremely well. Now, when everybody thinks about pressure, they think about getting – linebackers involved or getting DBs involved. But Coach K is really smart about the way that he develops pressures, the way he sets up pressures, and the way, in the end, he pesters quarterbacks. It's a combination of his defensive tackles, his scheme, getting numbers right, and having DBs that are willing to challenge on every single play. We're going to take a look at four clips here today, and I'm going to show you how he uses numbers to his advantage, gets offense out of position, and finds a way to pressure quarterbacks with good D tackles and DBs that are always in the fight. Let's take a look at the film. So here we go. First play. What you've got, Cal is in a two by two with a tight end, 11 personnel. So one back, one tight end, two by two. So an even set. What Washington is going to do, they're showing starting kind of a two high shell, but really they're going to end up with a post safety. Coach K is a post-safety defense. They run that single safety in the middle. They get run support out of their secondary. UW is going to bring pressure off the outside. So in this case, it's a blitz. Anytime it's secondary, it's a blitz. Anytime it's a linebacker, it's a dog. They're going to cover down with this safety. And then they're going to bluff pressure right here. They have him on the line of scrimmage for a reason. As an offensive line, when you're counting up protections, you have to count for everybody that's going to rush. And so what Cal is going to do in their count is they are going to lock man side over here and fan this way for the zone side. That means this right tackle has to kick slide to take any edge pressure. The guard, since he has a man on him, will engage in here on that nose tackle. And then these three are left to pick up a combination of three on the outside. Cal is running a scat protection, meaning the back is getting out of the backfield. Cal's going to leave linebackers to the quarterback. So what you're going to end up in terms of protection is you're going to see tackle kick for this man. Guard's going to stay home here. And then you're going to get these three working over here for these three. Knowing that, as this play moves forward, what Washington is doing on defense is they got Cal to count up numbers that way. They're going to drop this outside linebacker type into coverage. They're going to take this nose guard, who's already been counted by the guard, and they're going to bring him this direction. It's going to absorb two blockers. They're going to bring their D tackle and rush the center. They're going to bring their D end and rush the that guard. So what you've created now is you've got two to that weak side with your D tackle engaging the center. With this pressure off the outside, tackle takes it, and they're also going to blitz their weak side inside linebacker. What that gives you is what's called four weak. Cal's offensive line doesn't have enough to pick up four weak, and since they have scat protection, it's an automatic hot for the quarterback. He has to get back there and throw it. And so if he gets it completed outside, UW is giving a press man look right now, like they're locked up in man. 
And as a quarterback, when you see blitz pressure, you often think man. But instead, they're actually dropping into a three-match zone where he's sitting inside and he's playing your single high safety, meaning middle of the field is closed. And so as you drop here, you take away quick slants. As you drop underneath, you take away quick slants or sits as well. So really well-designed defense. That's how he gets there. Washington's going to end up getting that weak side inside linebacker free and put a hit on the quarterback. Even if he completes this ball, he still has that memory early on in the game. This is second and 10 of taking a shot early. Takes the shot because he's rushed, throws that ball high and away. And it's a hard catch for the running back. But Chase Garbers takes a big hit there. And so excellent play design by Coach K. That's one way that you get pressure is by bringing that edge pressure, slanting that line back into the boundary and creating a numbers mismatch where that defensive line has to count and they get their count wrong. You're going to see that throughout this scheme for Coach K. He does a ton where he's getting offensive lines to waste players and get one guy free. Similar to the RPO for the offensive side of the ball, the defense is finding a way to engage two guys instead of one and getting a guy free to run at the quarterback. Let's take a look at the next play. I know a lot of the questions had to be with that 2-4-5 look that you see a lot of time out of Washington with the linebacker type stand-up guys. But you're going to see Coach K actually uses a bunch of three down guys a lot. This is a D-tackle type, nose guard type, D-tackle type, nose guard type, rush end type here. And so three down linemen. And what you're going to see and what's unique about this defense is none of the linemen have any contained responsibility. Usually you're going to have the edge man in the line of scrimmage with contained responsibility somewhere out here. But instead, you have second and 12. This is a passing down. They know they're going to bring pressure. And because they have a called fire blitz on here and an outside linebacker here, those defensive linemen are free to work inside. Now here, once again, you're going to get a numbers issue and Coach K creates it by initial alignment. Cal's line here is going to slide this direction. And so you're going to get man protection on the backside. Left tackle is going to be responsible for this player. Guard is going to come with him for that player. That leaves your center one-on-one -on -one here, and your right guard has to pick up this in terms of your defensive tackle. But as you start to see edge pressure here, that right tackle has to slide out to be responsible for it. If he just lets it go, if he stays inside, that's a free hit on the quarterback. If this left tackle stays inside, this is a free hit on the quarterback, so they have to account for it. When Washington shows that look, Cal puts that slide in place, and once again, they have scat protection running back in motion, and it creates a mismatch. Guides out of position or one-on-one -on -one blocks up front. At the snap, you can see fire blitz peels. It's what's called a green rush, green blitz, green dog, meaning you come if the back stays in to block, you become the extra rusher. But if somebody gets outside in a hurry, you break off and cover it man. So he is no longer involved in the pass rush. But this tackle, because his initial slide is to the outside because he had to account for that rush, is now a wasted player. This linebacker was the guy on the line of scrimmage, drops out. But because they had to count him as a rusher, that left tackle has to account for him. He kicks out and he's not involved in protection. So what that leaves you is three on three inside. Washington has done a great job of recruiting this position, that nose guard position. Danny Shelton, I talked about him last time. Greg Gaines, talked about him last time. Really good football players inside, and there's a bunch more. So I'm not, there's a huge list of guys I could talk about. But they've done a great job at that position. And so watch on these matchups where you get one-on-one, -on -one, a center who was sliding right to start but is left on an island because your left guard had to come back for the defensive end on his left. Now the center is on an island as he slides right. Gaines just gets a arm inside, a huge push, and gets to the quarterback.
So granted, that is not great pass protection. But you can see we're getting the count wrong. Making that offensive line account for rushers that aren't coming puts you out of position and creates one-on-one matchups. Now we're going to look at the Pac-12 championship game from a couple years ago where Washington played Utah, who has a pretty big offensive line. Pretty good. Not necessarily the greatest pass blockers of all time, but really good run blockers. And we're going to show you how he does it in matchups without bringing pressure from the secondary. You have defensive end, D-tackle type. Nose guard, D-tackle type, stand-up backer. So just a four-man front. Two backers with an extra player on the edge of the box. So let's call it six and a half players in the box. This is third and eight. And Utah is going to run a drive concept. So you're going to get shallow, basic cross, go route, go route on the outside. They're trying to clear, hit that drive route or hit the basic behind it to get that first down. The other way Coach K creates pressure is by using his defensive players up front to block the blockers. You'll see a lot of twists, a lot of stunts, and he creates space just like you would in a pass route by using the rub or the block. In this case, he's going to use what are called ET stunts. Defensive end is going to rush inside and pick the guard while you get step to engage the guard, keep him where you want him, and loop to the outside. Up top, it's even more flagrant. Outside linebacker is going to come down and literally hit that guard right in his shoulder, and you're going to get outside rush. So ET stunts, you use the letter of the player that goes first, end tackle, so ET stunt, and they're going to get pressure this way by picking this guard off the outside. As a quarterback, you start to see guys coming free right in front of you, and you have to find a lane. It also oftentimes gets this guy free because once he picks, these guys are supposed to work together to pick up any games. And so as that tackle starts to readjust outside, the guy that picks oftentimes comes free, and that's the case here as well. So watch both the ends step up field and come down and pick. This is about to happen. He is about to get a hip, an edge. He is about to grab him. So guards are engaged right now, but they're about to be blocked, and you're going to get loopers off the outside. Boom. Loop comes around. Two guys free at the quarterback. This is open, but here is the first down marker. So because they're playing three match behind it, quarterback throws that underneath ball. You come up and tackle and get the first down. But because your quarterback is harassed, He's not accurate with this football. Throws it behind. You come up and make the tackle. And they've got a punt. So we've seen him do it with bluffs. We've seen him do it with bad counts. And we've seen him do it by blocking the blockers. Final look we're going to give you is doing it with personnel and timing. In this case, he's going to use a delay blitz to get pressure on the quarterback. So what do we got here? Utah, 11 personnel. Single tight end, single back. Trips to the field. Washington, one down guy. You see him right here, hand on the ground. Looking like he's going to put a hand on the ground outside as well. Hard edge rusher up top. Edge rusher down below, so a wide formation. Two linebackers sugared up at the line of scrimmage. Utah is going to slide. Left tackle has to slide outside for this guy. Guard is your first uncovered man. Even though they have him sugared up, they're going to leave him to the quarterback. So guard and center are going to work here. These four are going to work back for these four. What happens is the guard ends up getting engaged with the nose guard, and the center ends up getting engaged with the nose guard because this nose guard is attacking that center's inside right now. Right guard ends up on his man, the backer, and right tackle has to kick outside to take that edge rush. When I talked about timing, what Coach K is going to do here is he's going to delay blitz that backer. Like I said, these four should take those four. That's what should be picked up. But when they delay that backer, the Mike Dog. On his pressure, this guard and this center end up engaged in here, and so they're a man short because of that. This backer gets free clean. Now, 
Smart play by the Utah tight end. He sees it. He runs hot. It is third and six. The quarterback should hit his hot route. But they also have a scat out of the backfield. So he should either hit, boom, hot, breaking it off, or his scat right now, let his athletes do the job. But because pressure gets on him in a hurry, he hesitates, and he doesn't get away with it. See pressure, late Mike Dog, big hit in the backfield, huge play. Now that we know it, I'll run it back for you one time and show it to you in slow-mo. Everything lines out. This backer drops out. One, two, three, rush. Tackle fans, guard and center, engage. So they're wasting two on one right here. This backer is just taking off right now. So you devolve, nice open lane for him to run through. Nowhere for the quarterback to go. Too much heat. Three, two. So you can see Coach K uses a combination of different schemes to get pressure on the quarterback. And if you figure one out, he's got three or four more left in the bag. Longhorns fans, again, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys getting on the channel. Give me a like. Comment down below. If I can answer questions for you, I'm happy to answer them. And share this video out if you can. I'd appreciate it. Don't forget, if you haven't done it yet, subscribe, ring that bell, get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. I appreciate you coming in. I love great football fans. I even love the rivalry stuff going on between fans as long as it's respectful. So awesome to talk to you guys again today. Try to give you as much stuff as I can because I love great fan bases. I love talking X's and O's, just a little stuff to get you primed for spring ball as it comes up. Love college football. Love talking about scheme. I'll talk to you again soon.